All right, for Top Secret, we're going to play three videos, and then we have one that Lady is going to talk about, then we're going to jump into questions. Okay. All right, Lady Ada. Okay, time to enable my big project. So this is a Pico Bell Tripler, and I'm um, putting together this little demo to test all the capabilities. So this is a TFT display, um, and it uses SPI and I2C for the capacitive touch, and there's also an SD card that has an image, and then like you know the IRQ and the touch over here. And then if you look over here, here's the tripler. So in the middle, I've got my Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040. This is that iSpy connector, which is connecting to the TFT display. So it's kind of nice. Um, no soldering. And then in a STEM IQT port for sensors. I'm working on that HDC. And then over here, oh, I've got a little NeoPixel underneath. So we'll do an RGB stuff. And um, a LiPo battery connected to a battery charging circuit with status LEDs. And finally, that enable switch, which I can disable and turn off everything to save power. And then, you know, you charge it up the battery by plugging it in. So um, you can have one Pico, two Pico Bells, and of course, all these built-in accessories plus some prototyping area. This is going to be a really awesome tripler underplate. Going to be in the store real soon. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? Okay, this is, as you can see, a 64 by 32 RGB matrix running one of our Arduino demos. This is the double buffering scrolling text demo. You can see it's got some nuts and balls and some text. But what's cool is it's running on an ESP32C6. Okay, great. Um, this is my prototype. So what's cool is Jepler recently updated Protomatter, the library that we use for interfacing with these Hub75 compatible RG matrices to the board support package 3.xx release candidate one, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, updated all the library to use the new timing and uh, RMT um, API definitions. And so uh, new boards like the C6 can now uh, drive these matrices. Now it's not gonna run as fast as the S3, which has like, you know, built in like a huge amount of PS RAM and uh, some built in optimizations, but you can do like four bit depth. Um, so it could be good for, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or ZB-controlled RGB matrix projects. It looks pretty nice. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, I've got from Sincerian here this beautiful Sen55. This is part of the Sen5X series. It's a um, kind of all-in-one ambient temperature, humidity, volatile organic compound, particulate matter sensor. Um, it's great for air quality detection. And it's got this uh, JST-GH connector. So what I did... Is I made a little adapter board to make it easy to plug into STEM IQT. So it has a little boost converter, um, a charge cap converter that'll give you five volts because it needs five volts for the motor. Um, you saw that fan in the beginning. And then I have it plugged here into a uh, ESP32C6 feather, kind of testing both at the same time. And then over here on the OLED plugged into the other side is the up from the sensor. And then if I take, you can see it's actually like kind of nice here. If I take this soldering iron and can see the particulate dust from the solder go in, uh, the sensor reacts. So I know everything is working and uh, hopefully this will clear out in a second. But otherwise the sensor is working really great and it's nice plug and play, no soldering required, no wiring, uh, just connect it up to any of our feathers or cutie pies to get an all-in-one air quality sensor going. Thanks, Sincerian. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? Okay, this is a new cutie pie board that I designed, and we've got assembled PCBs for now. It's the CH552. This is an 8051 chip, um, this little board right here. And it's got like basically just enough GPIO to make a cutie pie. There's two shared pins because they have the same functionality, but you've got SPI and I2C and four analog inputs and UART and, you know, power and ground. And uh, it's single sided, it's kind of nice. Uh, there's a bootloader button and a reset button and a power regulator. And um, to program it, I'm using a Raspberry Pi because there is an open source Python script that allows programming of the CH552. Uh, so if you see over here, it's loaded in into this bed of nails pogo pin and the USB is coming out of here. And then I'm using these two wires that go to GPIO on the Raspberry Pi to do the reset and bootloading select. Um, and then the test program is written in CH55X Duino. Oh, this is, I have to figure out the uh, um, clamp. It's a little bit iffy. But um, after about 10 seconds, it's finished programming. And once done programming, it uh, has a little nice NeoPixel, so you know it's working. 
So I just have to fix this clamp because you saw it was um, not touching one of the pogo pins quite nicely. Uh, but otherwise, it's ready to go. It'll be in the shop real soon. And Lydia, what's this? Okay, and um, doing more weird chips as cutie pies. This is a CHV203, which is a Risk Five core, uh, but also a very low cost chip again from WCH. And this is uh, just like another cutie pie design. Um, for people who want to experiment with this chip, also does not have Arduino support. Uh, but you can compile code for the Risk Five processor, and it has native USB, and it has um, some cool peripherals, and it's like pretty fast. So it'll be kind of neat to see uh, that prototype show up. That's not secret. <laughs>